in Wales, I think every single village has got a rugby club. It's the national sport. So many of my exam questions have uh, <laughs> rugby injuries in them. Excuse the rapid mud guard. So this week I thought we'd talk about the round ligament of the liver. It sounds a little bit esoteric, but honestly, stay with me, there's some functional anatomy in here. The round ligament of the li liver, also known as the ligamentum teres, uh, it seems oddly specific. Well, I've been doing these videos for three and a half years and I'm kind of running out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> that's, me. that's not the entire truth. Um, it's a structure that students often get confused about. But the honest truth is I wanted to look at it more so I could describe it better to students when they ask me about it. So you're like my trial runner. If I'm, I'm going to try and describe it to you guys, and if I do, then I'm doing all right, right? The reason it's interesting is because it's an embryological remnant. It used to be the umbilical vein. So we're going to talk about the umbilical vein, or ductus venosus, how the blood from the uh, placenta goes to the liver, some of it bypasses the liver, so we've got all that. We're going to talk about the connected tissue structures, and we'll talk about uh, the round ligament of the liver, um, so you'll know where it runs, what it is, why it's there, where it's come from, Ooh, and it links to portosystemic uh, anastomoses. So it gives you signs in the skin of the abdomen if somebody has you know, a, a fibrosed liver that blood doesn't pass through too well. I'll get to that. You'll see what I'm talking about. Stay with it. First of all, let's get the connective tissue concept nailed. Right, so we can see this line here. Whenever we look at models of the, of the liver, we see this line on the anterior bit here. So what's this? Well, what we're really seeing is we're seeing the peritoneum. So we've talked about peritoneum lining the abdominal <coughs> cavity, the, peri the parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum covering the organs. And what we're seeing here is the shiny bit is the visceral peritoneum covering the liver. Because it is, it's shiny, it's a serous membrane. And then this is actually a cut edge. So that peritoneum went to the anterior abdominal wall and helped anchor the liver in place. So what we're seeing up here, these are the bare areas. These are not shiny because this is not covered in peritoneum. Right, so uh, go back to the embryo and We've talked about this before, but there was a, a simple tube, which is going to become the very compli complicated and convoluted gut tube. And we have the space inside the abdomino, abdominal cavity and the peritoneum lining the abdominal cavity comes together to form two layers, which is the mesentery and then goes around that gut tube. So that's the mesentery, the visceral peritoneum, the parietal peritoneum is all one continuous sheet. That's the the, the starting point that we're coming from, right? At the level of the stomach, it's a bit special. So that embryonic tube that's gonna dilate and become the stomach, it has a dorsal mesentery, same as everywhere else, um, but it also has a ventral mesentery. So the dorsal mesentery comes from the posterior abdominal wall, goes around the stomach, continues on out, as a ventral mesentery, or it gets called the ventral mesogastrium, and then the liver forms inside that. So the liver gets surrounded by those two layers of mesentery. But that ventral mesogastrium, or ventral mesentery, continues to the anterior abdominal wall. So that means you've kind of got this, this sheet of, or double layered sheet really, of mesentery, with a stomach in it, with a liver in it, bits of pancreas, gallbladder, and that sort of thing. And that's why in the adult, what we see is that from the lesser curvature of the stomach, we see the lesser omentum, just those two sheets of mesentery, which then go to the liver, go around the liver, and then continue as the falciform ligament. So those two sheets of mesentery come together and the falciform ligament is then anchoring the liver to the anterior abdominal wall. And the reason I needed to describe that first, there's a very old peritoneum cling film video if you want to know more, but the reason I needed to describe that first is that this, or rather this, is where we find the round ligament of the liver, or the ligamentum teres, kind of in the bottom free edge of the falciform ligament. So if we turn this over, ah, that's the round ligament here. This is the falciform ligament because it's just those two sheets of mesentery covering the liver and continuing. But here, this is, 
I'm not going to say it's a proper ligament because it's not like a proper ligament in the ankle that goes from bone to bone. But this is a ligamentous structure. This was the umbilical vein and it has become the round ligament of the liver or the ligamentum teres. And look, actually, look, see, it's running across the liver to these blood vessels. This is the porta hepatis. You know, like the hilum of the liver where blood vessels enter and where the bile duct leaves. And here we have the portal vein carrying blood from the entire gastrointestinal tract to the liver. And we have the um, hepatic artery proper, proper supplying normal arterial blood to the liver. Um, and the umbilical vein carried blood from the, pl the placenta to the, the portal vein the left branch really. That means then that well, you know where the umbilical vein, you know where the umbilical vein went into you, right? There's a bit of a residual structure <laughs> left there. So you have one umbilical vein, two umbilical arteries connecting you to your mother's placenta. So the umbilical vein goes into the umbilicus and then it's, you know, it's deep to the skin as a, as a remnant. You might find it if you dissect carefully. The round ligament then descend, that then ascends from the umbilicus deep to the skin up to the liver and appears here. That's, that's the entire course of the round ligament, of the uh, ligamentum teres. Hold on, there's more. Okay, um, the liver <coughs> functionally has two lobes. It has a right lobe and a left lobe. So for example, when we see the portal vein enter the liver, we see it split into left and right portal veins, carrying blood to those two functional parts. But when we talk about the liver, we talk about you know, the left lobe and the right lobe, but then we also talk about the chordate lobe and the quadrate lobe. But those aren't those aren't like the lobes of the lungs, which each has their own airway, each has their own pulmonary arteries and veins, right? These are not functional lobes, these are just kind of shapes in the liver, because the liver is kind of a, a soft tissue. Now look, there's the gallbladder, and there's the, um, the, the round ligament of the liver. And what happens when the liver forms is that it kind of squidges this bit of liver tissue into another lump, which looks like a lobe. But what's this here? Well, you've got all this, when you're, a, when you're a fetus, you've got all this lovely blood coming from your mother's placenta um, into the umbilical vein. So the blood is rich in oxygen, it's rich in nutrients, it's all the good stuff you need to grow, particularly your brain, which is going to use a lot of energy in growing. But if all of that blood passes to the liver and passes across the cells of the liver before getting back to the inferior vena cava and then the heart and off around the body, then that means the cells of the liver, the hepatocytes, might make use of much of those good nutrients. So maybe it would be a good idea if there was a bypass, and that's what this is. This is, in the adult, the ligamentum venosum. Um, in, the, in the fetus, it's the ductus venosus, right? And this, so this, when this is the umbilical vein, all that lovely, good quality blood is coming, well, it's good quality blood, that lovely blood with great nutrients in it is coming from the mum's placenta into the liver. About half of that blood, I think, um, instead of going into the liver, through the liver and into the inferior vena cava, it passes into the ductus venosus, which is a vessel running around here and then goes into the inferior vena cava. So this blood bypasses the tissue of the liver, goes into the inferior vena cava, and you know what's on top there, it's the heart, right? So then that blood goes into the heart, aortic arch, whoosh, straight up to the brain, off around the body. So that means that this lobe, the chordate lobe, is actually just a squidged bit of liver, a shape made by the ductus venosus squidging the liver up against the inferior vena cava. So in us, this is the ligamentum arteriosum. So if you have the opportunity to look at a prosected liver, a dissected liver, you'll see, you'll see these connective tissues here. So just remember that the peritoneum is a, is a thin covering that, that forms mesentery, whereas these ligaments here are actually remnants of blood vessels. Have you seen the, um, the ductus arteriosus near the heart? So the blood that's going out through the pulmonary trunk in the fetus, the ductus arteriosus, allows that blood to go from the pulmonary trunk straight into the aorta instead of going to the lungs. It becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. That's like the, 
the counterpart to the Ductus venosus cooper. Okay, there's still more. Although the umbilical vein has closed, there are still para-umbilical veins running along the same route. And those para-umbilical veins drain some of the anterior abdominal wall to the portal vein. Because of because of this bit of embryology, whereas much of the anterior much of the anterior abdominal wall drains its veins through various routes to get back to the inferior vena cava. Okay, so this region of the body, the anterior abdominal wall, um, can drain its blood through two routes: through the portal vein, through the liver to the inferior vena cava, or more directly to the inferior vena cava. And then that blood's back in the circulatory system and goes off and around, right? Now, um, there is a thing, or there are things, called portosystemic anastomoses, and they're very interesting. Um, in some liver disease, we're thinking uh, cirrhosis of the liver, um, if the liver changes and becomes fibrotic, so instead of being um, a lot of hepatocytes with lovely channels that blood can flow through really easily because an awful lot of blood flows through the liver to get back to the inferior vena cava. If instead of that the liver changes and becomes filled with lots of fibrous material because the liver's been damaged, it's been exposed to lots of toxins over a prolonged period of time, thinking alcohol abuse, then it's very difficult for all of this blood to pass through the liver and get back to the inferior vena cava. So that means that the blood pressure in the portal vein increases. We get portal hypertension. Now, given the anatomy I just described, can you work out what happens? So the blood can't pass through the portal vein to get to the, and through the liver to get to the inferior vena cava very easily. So instead, it passes back down the para-umbilical veins, and there are anastomoses. There are links between the para-umbilical veins and the other veins of the anterior abdominal wall. So the blood flows back through the para-umbilical veins, through these anastomosing veins, to the other veins of the anterior um, abdominal wall, and then that blood drains back to the inferior vena cava. Well, that's very handy. Yes, except that, remember, the veins have got very thin walls. They're not thick structural things like arteries, because they don't have to withstand much pressure. So they tend to dilate under this increased pressure. So what we see is, we start to see these enlarged veins. Random tap going. Um, we start to see these enlarged veins appearing underneath the skin. Varices, varicose veins around the umbilicus. You know, they're dark coloured and they look like, uh, look like worms under the skin. Or they look like the head of Medusa. Remember Medusa? She's got the snakes for hair. Uh, so this gets called Caput Medusae. And that is a pretty cool and interesting bit of anatomy, if you ask me. And of course, as you can see, it's, it's functionally, clinically relevant. Um, what about the umbilical arteries? Where do they come from? Well, they come from the vesicle artery. They come from the arteries supplying blood to the bladder. But that's a story for another day, all right? So that's the round ligament. That's what it was, where it come from, comes from, embryologically speaking, and that's where it comes from, anatomically speaking, where it runs to. So when you look at a liver, hopefully you can identify now the falciform ligament and then look for the, the round ligament of the lig liver or the ligamentum teres down here. All right, good stuff. Uh, see you next week.